Hi, I'm Krista. And I'm Sarah. And we have this podcast called Have We Talked About? Where two friends at different points in their lives chat about everything in their lives. From current events to pop culture, from self care to self indulgence, and everything in between. Join us weekly to see what we talk about next. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, new week. We're back. We are back after a little bit of a break, I feel like, because sometimes... I know, but the the listeners don't know that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Ha ha. Surprise. We took a small (laughs) break. Uh, Yeah, because, you know, as the listeners kind of knew, but didn't really knew, you were a mom, but like a a new mom to two. So you have a little, Mm -hmm. you know, your baby's now a couple months old, and I just had a birthday, so we've taken some time to kind of just like celebrate special things, right? Right, exactly. But uh, we're happy to be back, so excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully what we're talking about today will provide the listeners some th- maybe things that information if they want to know more about starting a podca- <laughs> podcast because that's what we're chatting about today yeah yeah that's what we're talking about we're talking about i guess what we've what we've learned so far in being uh podcasters for four months now i think at this point so yeah not newbies but still learning and growing and our experience what we've done and i guess things that we still have to continue to work on yeah absolutely i feel like there'll be lots we still have to work on and To make this known, like Krista and I, this is not our field. We just randomly one day, so let's just um, rewind a little bit. So let's say like end of 2022, Krista and I were, you know, working our full-time jobs or chatting every day. And how Krista and I chat is WhatsApp, but specifically through voice notes, because right. we have a lot to say to one another, and I just can't, we just can't text one another, so we have a lot to say. Um, but how this initially kind of came about, I would say, is Krista was listening to, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were listening to Meghan Markle's podcast. No, that came... Uh, it came a little bit after so to your point we do chat a lot and we do use voice notes because who who can type now without a blackberry keyboard right and we're (laughs) android users so we use whatsapp um we had been because you are you are very much a lover and follower of the royal family i at a distance so the the big talk of the town was the harry and megan documentary that had dropped uh just before christmas yeah, we dissected it. We we That's shared right. our thoughts, our uh, <laughs> negative thoughts, positive thoughts, and everything in between. That's right. We gave our positives and our opportunities and kind of like really took a look at it through, I guess, a magnifying glass. And then from there, then I said, um, we should do a podcast because I've always wanted to do a podcast for like Um, I'm going to correct time. you on that one. Okay, go ahead. Sure, correct me. I'm pretty sure I was like, ha ha. We should do, or like, it would be so funny if we did a podcast and you're like, oh my God, I've always wanted to do one forever. And I was like, okay, done. Yeah. (laughs) That's kind of how it happened. Yeah. So that was in January. And then I feel like from there, it just rapidly came together because we were both so excited to start this new journey that I think within a few days, we had like our name, our logo, where we were going to post it. We already like researched softwares and different tools and everything like that. Like, so it was a lot of research um, and chatting with one another as to like, what are we going to do next? Well, how do we do that? What do we do with that? Yeah. So I think uh, the way that Sarah is telling it makes it seem like we we really had all our ducks in a row of what to do, but it was like more, we come from an industry or from companies where when we don't know how to do something, we roll up our sleeves and we just figure it out. And that's literally what we did. So uh, we did think of a name first. We worked on a logo for a while because we wanted to feel comfortable about that. And I think that's what all the other professional podcasters do when they give advice is that come up with a name of your podcast and a logo. Those things are super important. Yeah, we we briefly chatted about like what we wanted to talk about and we didn't really, we didn't narrow down a particular 
I don't know, topic or theme. Ours was pretty like general, like we're going to talk about kind of what we want to talk about and what interests us. And then maybe we'll narrow it down later. Um, But that's kind of how we felt. And that's kind of it got it goes with the name of our podcast. Have we talked about (laughs) whatever? It's wide open. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that aligns with the whole idea of like defining your niche. That's something that they do talk about in a podcast of doing. So uh, technically, our niche is adulthood and navigating that space. But the difference for us is that we're coming from the two opposing viewpoints, right? Like Sarah mm-hmm. and I are like night and day, oil and vinegar, married mom, single lady, like different, different, different. But I think it helps to have a niche because then you can probably get a focus about like what you want to talk about because we do sometimes struggle with content Mm -hmm. um, because we can talk about everything. So the biggest key I think that we learned early on after we like researched like how to do it. Some people do video for their podcast as you know we guys we only do audio and that will probably stay the same for a while till we figure out that editing piece. But being organized We learned early on that we had to get organized very quickly because we have to put out our content on so many spaces. So we have our content on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on every podcast that I could basically put our podcast on. (laughs) It's everywhere. It's everywhere. But we also are trying to figure out where our audience lives, right, Sarah? So like we have, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok. I think I said Instagram already. We're on YouTube. One of the biggest challenges I think we have right now that we have like three months of data is like where our listeners are and when they're listening because we've had listeners so far from around the world. Mm -hmm. Canada, US, Thailand, Germany, uh, United Kingdom, Brazil. So I think that's another thing that new podcasters have to figure out is like where your audience is and when they're listening. And I think we are still trying to kind of determine that. Yeah. I think over time we'll we'll know more and more and hopefully we can really focus in and narrow in and figure out ex- exact day and exact time and when we can post. I think that's important. What was one thing or what were maybe a few things, Krista, that you thought would be easier? Because I thought... <laughs> podcasting was like oh you just like you know chat with a friend about whatever and then maybe edit it and post it what did I think would be easier I don't know if I thought it would be easy I just I don't think I thought of all the things that we would have to consider in terms of um it kind of goes back to organization but like building a system so we have to take this content that we record then break it into clips which is super important to give like little teasers to our audience and then Mm -hmm. disseminate that out into the world. And that all Mm -hmm. requires organization and planning. Yeah, absolutely. Planning, organization, scheduling, and even like the content creation is huge. Yeah. And again, we are not those people. So we are figuring and we are tweaking every week to see kind of what people like, what are, what are, how our engagement is, things like that. I think that was huge for me be like oh my gosh like content creation is huge when yeah. doing this yeah and I think that's something that we just kind of realized now and watching some of the analytics is like your audience doesn't know what you're working on when you're working on it if you don't tell them right so that's yeah. where the content has to come in where it's like you have to be putting that out there to say hey guys we're still here you know stay tuned we're gonna we're cooking something up for you and yeah. then um building that out and and scheduling it accordingly and then planning as much as you can in advance but I think I don't know a month or two is probably more than enough and then leaving some room for tweaks and changes so for our podcast because we kind of do everything it also can include current events so sometimes we have to be able to like leave some space for things that we have to record like ad hoc like the biggest thing for us recently was like King Charles coronation and that's not something we can record ahead of time right like that's like we're live we're across from Buckingham Palace we're doing the things (laughs) can you imagine oh my god that would be so fun dream Um, dream Dream. Yeah. <laughs> so y- getting organized is the biggest thing. One thing that we didn't do in the beginning that we realized was really important and maybe other people need to know too is investing in some type of equipment. Yeah. Because we were just using just like headphones with a mic on it and realizing that the audio was a bit poor. So I'm not saying go out and buy everything. 
no. equipment wise, right? Like go out and get and rent the studio and get the soundboard and all of that. Oh but, my gosh, fancy. Uh, Sarah and I do not record together. We're in separate spaces. She obviously, she has a newborn and she lives out of the city. So we, we do rely on like having a video meeting call to be able to record and for us it works. But uh, investing in the mic so that that sound is good for the for the audio tracks, I think, has been like a bit of a game changer for us. Yeah, life changing for sure. Yeah. It makes us sound so professional. Right. So at a minimum, I would say invest in that. But like, do you need the other space and the filters and the other like, headphones? That's up to you. That's completely up to you. Yeah, um, for sure. There's so I also- many. Yeah, yeah, you go. There's so many softwares that make it easy to do. I think Mm -hmm. in one hand, I think for Sarah and us, we probably did it the hard way in a way of like, we'll figure out where we want to put it after we record it, where there's all these platforms that will host your podcast for you and do some of that heavy lifting. Buzzsprout, Libsyn, Spotify, you can do it. Riverside, StreamYard, uh, PodApp, Podcastle, all of these places. I'm missing a tons, but... um, They also help just like with the recording, with the editing and just like posting right away. That's not what we do. (laughs) We probably do it the harder (laughs) way um, of recording the audio in a separate space, editing the audio and then uploading it. But for right now, that's what works and that's what we're used to and that's what we know. But, Mm -hmm. you know, that could change. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I was also going to say, like, I feel like it's it might be a huge overhaul for one person to, to want to do a podcast. Maybe if you can team up with someone that you think may be good because it is a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and maybe team up with someone that you feel like you can work well with. Like, like Chris has said, her and I were very different, but I think that's how we get stuff done. Um, sure. Because she has, Krista has her strengths that are not my strengths and I have my strengths that are not her strengths. Yeah. And if we don't have those strengths, then we're going to figure it out together. We're going to talk through it. Um, and, I, and I think we work well together because of it. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think that also talks into like deciding what your podcast is going to be about. Right. So like there's a niche, but it's like, what will you be? Will you be doing interviews where you do have to engage somebody else? Will it just be you talking? Will it be you bouncing off of somebody else? And if it's that other person, do you guys like the same things that you think you can probably talk about those things? And then um, the two other kind of spinoffs of that of like, how long are you going to have your podcast run for in terms of like length of an episode and how frequent are you going to post? So for somebody doing it by themselves and you might have a full time job as well, it it might be a lot. Um, So consider being, you know, doing it with somebody else. Absolutely. But we post weekly. Some people post every two weeks. I think that that's depending on your niche and what you're covering for you to um you to decide i did pull some stats for this obviously because i'm a stats girl um the average podcast length is 43 minutes i Mm. think our podcasts usually run between 45 to an hour Uh, the most popular podcast genres are society and culture business news and politics and comedy Hmm. makes sense so if you guys were wondering what to do uh you can probably take from that and and decide where your genre wants to fit in um Going back to like time of day and us figuring out where our audience is, I thought that this was interesting, Sarah. I don't think I shared this mm-hmm. with you yet. The most popular time of day for podcast consumption is in the morning mm-hmm. with 22% of listeners tuning in between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Ah, so like maybe getting ready for work, on their way to work kind of thing. Right, like the commuting in. And then uh, 17% of listeners listen in the afternoon between 1 and 4 and mm-hmm. 16% listen in the evening between 6 and 9. Okay. Which is interesting. But if you have a global audience, those times fall anywhere yeah. during the day, depending on where you are in the world. But yeah, valid. Good to know. Well, and I also read that the podcast industry is supposed to continue to grow year after year. So if you are thinking or if you are interested in potentially starting a podcast, now is the time. Do it. Yeah, they're supposed to double in revenue advertising revenue or something like from two billion Mm -hmm. this year to like four billion next year so um if you want to try i would say definitely give it a try because it probably we're probably not at the point of saturation yet but it's about i think what we are learning because it is not our job and we don't come from this profession is the marketing of our podcast yeah and that's still what we're learning engaging our audience finding out where our audience lives that stuff i think that we're just beginning to explore 
joining like support groups for other podcasters, potentially like attending conferences about podcasting. That's where I think our next steps will be. And I think it's good every three months to kind of like do a deep dive or an analysis of where you're at with your podcast Mm -hmm. to see where you need to kind of pivot. I think one of the things that we did early on, which was still challenging, is just to even change our logo. Remember, Sarah? Like, yeah. yeah. We were really in love with our logo. And then just looking at some of the analytics, we were kind of driving our posts based on that color scheme and weren't yeah. kind of getting the response that we wanted and getting response off of the ones that we didn't think were that big or great a post, but because the color, you know, it was the colors and the straight you know, colors the impact. Yeah, exactly. Um, that we had to kind of pivot and make that change. So we're evaluating that change, but you have to be open to it. And I think a lot of people are, I don't know, I think you feel really proud about your work and there's a sensitivity there. And if people aren't responding to it, sometimes the first reaction is, well, I don't want to change. I love it. And it's like, okay, but you're, you love it, but you also want other people to love it too. So you kind of gotta, you gotta bend with the wind. Like you can't just be stern and solid about it. So that stuff I think that we're still learning we by no means have like a big base yet but we're in it for the long haul podcasting is the long tail game yeah and we both enjoy it like we both enjoy I think most aspects of podcasting like reporting it recording a podcast is probably the easiest thing out of the whole process (laughs) let's be honest um because there's so many other steps let's say in the process um but i think i think we enjoy i think we enjoy everything and I, and i think both of us enjoy the learning aspect as well and the research aspect and the analytics aspect yeah so you have to kind of go in knowing that, that you're taking on this task and that it's going to be a, a, there's going to be a steep learning curve and a continuous learning curve for sure but you and have to especially love it. especially like if you have a full-time job like it's very hard to juggle starting something new and exciting and something you don't know and also like doing your full-time job because there are many times where we you know met in the evenings chat on the weekends about certain things because we just didn't have time during the day because we both have you know our full-time jobs um so it's it's a lot of uh dedication a lot of um energy and time you need to put in if you are serious yeah it just embrace the journey right like we're we're just it's a marathon and we're just still kind of running our first couple of kilometers and we're just like taking it as it comes <laughs> but it does come down to like scheduling and really optimizing your time like Sarah yeah. said we are this is not our full-time job this is like a hobby that we would love to turn into something more but we're doing it late at night but it does take some time like to audit or not audit to edit like a an, a podcast as much as we love recording them it does take time to edit it right like it can take anywhere between four to six hours and that's something that we have to account for within our schedules in terms of being able to churn out the content on in a timely mm-hmm. manner so that's where the planning really comes into play I think another thing is we love recording them but we understand the importance of giving the other person the stage um, so if you are like working with somebody else in podcasting Nobody wants to hear two people talking over each other in a podcast, number one. Yeah. And also, I think what people advertise um, in terms of like, just record and put it out there and it doesn't matter. I would say definitely do your best to try and edit. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Because do you really want to listen to a non-edited podcast? No. I don't. Right? Because there's a lot. Yeah, I don't. I would rather have it a little bit edited to, to, to listen to it. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah, so I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't underplay the editing aspect. Nobody wants long pauses. Nobody wants to sit and wait while the other person goes and like puts the dog in the laundry room or something like, <laughs> or like bad audio too. I think like, and we, and I'm just gonna call, I'm just gonna call it out. Our if you listen audio. to our first few episodes when we you know initially started back in February, um, it wasn't the greatest audio, but we learn as we go. We got, we ordered microphones um, and the audio sounds a lot better now. <laughs> right. But that was like, it's, it's, it's testing and learning and, 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 and making the change when we need to make the change uh, and then moving forward now, like 
there's no looking back. Well, that's a small investment, right? So you're spending 50 to $60 on a small microphone versus getting all the equipment and renting studio space. For us, that's like a small trade-off. Yeah. That's worth it in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I think it's good to really support other podcasters as much as you can. Um, and I think some of the things that we might look at in the future is like doing a lot of cross pollination if we can if we mm. find other people within our niche or kind of area that we can bring on the show and vice versa and and have other voices come on I think that's something definitely that people should consider also consider the fact that other people who maybe aren't in the same place as you might actually use you as a template to copy mm. and paste mm. unfortunately we've we've experienced that a little bit early on where um we were being hijacked, right? Like we were literally yeah. being plagiarized, uh, yeah. which is totally because our flattering. content was so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we found out. I'm just, yeah, we just just say it straight. We we saw that a um, a new podcaster, you know, stole. Let's just say it how it is. Stole some of our content and posted it as their own. Um, fully didn't even change any of the colors or anything. Um, so like. Uh, I love that you love our content, but <laughs> <laughs> at least give us credit or say something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, because it's uh, hard. Content's hard. It's hard to make, but I, I'm all like, we we've all copied and pasted somebody's content as inspiration and then and then changed it. So I'm not saying that we yeah. are graphic designers that created something that new, but oh my god, no! It was very obvious. And going back and looking at our analytics, all of the things, the posts that showed in our analytics as being shared or saved yeah. were ones that we're using and just changing the name on so yeah it's like that's never a good feeling unfortunately yeah. so uh but on the positive side it makes us feel like we're doing the right things yeah for sure like um, they liked it so much that they wanted to use it <laughs> yeah and i'm all for being inspired by people but like giving credit where it's due and you know, yeah, they were, for sure. If I'm following a podcast and I really like their post or something, I'd be like, hey, we really love that. I would love to do, you know, a, a version of it. Are you cool with yeah. that? Like you want to build uh, alliances in this game. You don't want to sure. you know, burn bridges. So I think that that's, Absolutely. that's where they went wrong. And anyway, they as far as I know, they haven't done any more podcasts because they don't have any material to take from. So. <laughs> um also going on your kind of future state as well i know you men mentioned some things um i think eventually we want to do video it's just there's a lot of research and the editing and everything like that that we need to spend time looking into before we actually launch the video because don't you want to see our lovely faces and our reactions <laughs> and our <laughs> and everything like that i think you know we're going to continue to like tweak and work on our content um, and maybe start looking down the road, start looking into like affiliate marketing, brand deals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Cause that's a huge, I don't even know. That's a huge space that I have no idea about, but we'll, Chris and I will research it and we'll figure it out. Like we always do. Yeah. We'll figure it out as we go. We're building the plan as we fly it. And I think that yeah. it speaks to the bigger thing is that the priority for us is to grow the audience space so that those other things can happen. So we need listeners and we need their feedback and we need, you know, we need to build that community in order to do the other things like sponsorships and affiliate marketing, because otherwise we're not selling, we're selling something to nobody. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we w we do want to show you our beautiful faces, though I don't want to have to do makeup every time we have a podcast um, at some point, but our, our investment right now is in you guys. So um, yeah. But if you want to see our faces, let us know, obviously. Let us know on our social media if you prefer to see a video version instead of just hearing our voices. Um, and it's something that we can obviously consider. For sure. What other um, tips or maybe what other advice could we tell people that are like on the fence about potentially starting a podcast? I think the number one thing is if you want to start a podcast, uh, Oh, did we did we talk about this already? One of the things that they talk about in terms of like the research that we did that we didn't do as podcasters is to build up the hype around the launch and kind of have some pre-recorded episodes to, to give the listener something to binge on. And mm -hmm. then that way it gives you a little bit of like lead up time to kind of get your ducks in a row of like getting the logo, understanding what kind of social media you're going to post on. Uh, getting a, an idea of how your, you know, your first three episodes sound before you release them. Um, 
I would say take that lead time as much as you need to to get comfortable with those certain spaces and just pick a couple things that you want to focus on. Like uh, Spotify and, and Apple are the biggest in terms of podcast platforms. If you just want to focus on getting those out there first, then don't worry about everything else. Whatever's the yeah. easiest way for you to do that. 45 minutes is a good episode length. Focus on getting them, you know, at that length, 30 to 45 minutes, getting good with your audio editing and then and then take it from there. Um, based on the research I did, but again, it all depends on what your niche is. Twitter is supposed to be where the podcasters live. So mm-hmm. if you want to focus your efforts there, by all means, go ahead. Um, TikTok, as we know, gets a lot of, I don't know, use isn't the right word or utility, but it's a space where people live. So we do, we do, um, spend time kind of promoting our content there um and then youtube i feel like youtube yeah yeah. youtube shorts in particular i think is more where it's at compared to the youtube videos absolutely but it's 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 what we're also learning is that that marketing term of the call to action right like we need to you need to ask your listeners to do something or what what the next step is so we're learning to be like hey you like this this is funny right Come and take a look at the whole thing over here in our podcast <laughs> episode. And that's, totally. that's kind of the learning. So, yeah, I would just say take it take it in small steps and bites and kind of plan it out as best you can. Being like, are you going to do it every two weeks in post? Are you going to do it every week? Mm-hmm. And then be in it for the long haul. I think at the beginning, Sarah, you and I were like, well, at least I was really pushing like, we have to see where we land at a year. <laughs> yeah. A year in to see what kind of traction we have knowing that every three months or so we're going to kind of always kind of reevaluate where we need to change and pivot. But um, it's a long tail game, but if you want to put the effort in and stick around, I think it can be fruitful. So we're in it to win it. (laughs) That should be our slogan. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, One thing I did learn about podcast episodes, at least from like titles. And I think that I can share is that you want your audience to be able to search it easily. So while we've spent time kind of doing kind of catchy, punchy episode titles, we, we are kind of trying to pivot and make them more to the point of exactly what they are so that they, they can be found easily yeah. and searched. Like we have very funny t- titles, but are people actually like typing those exact words? I doubt it. Yeah. Um, so now we, yeah, exactly what Chris has said, we pivoted and we've changed the way we are titling our episodes just in hopes that more people will find it um just based on keywords yeah (laughs) exactly um what i was gonna say one thing that we also had done differently we didn't do the lead up to our launch we just launched one episode and kind of crossed our fingers uh but also we don't have a website and that's something that we may look at in the future but i know a lot of materials and other podcast kind of experts say like work on your website your seo it's a personal choice, but for us, we, we haven't done that yet. Um, so we're relying strictly on social media where markets yeah. and audiences already live to kind of push that material. So it's something to think about as well as that I don't, we don't know enough to know that it's not necessary, but what we're saying is then you, if you don't have a website, then you need to push it out somewhere else. And even if you do have a website, nobody knows your website exists until you like make it easily searchable to find it. Right. So totally social totally. media definitely matters. And it comes down to time, right? I feel like this could totally be a full-time job, but you have a full-time job. I'm currently on maternity leave. Uh, It's hard to carve out all that time to work on all this. So we are trying, but we definitely have future plans for, for our podcast. Yeah. And again, like we're just doing it in little small bite-sized chunks, right? I will also say I suffer from insomnia, so it might be a little easier for me to do certain things versus other people have full-time jobs because I'm awake (laughs) when other people are (laughs) sleeping. So again, I think that plays into deciding what works based on your schedule and your time. Like, can you post every two weeks versus every week? Every week is a lot. Um, Yeah. But when... When Sarah and I have time to like basically knock out recording a few episodes, um, mm-hmm. we do so to kind of give us that that bandwidth to be ahead of the game and edit and then plan out our content accordingly. Should we um, tell a secret? Oh. How many episodes? I don't even know this number. I think I may have an idea, but how many episodes have we recorded in one week, Krista? 
In one week, how many? In one week, we, I think we recorded four, right? I think, I think so too. I don't think we hit five. So again, that was a week where I, who knows what was going on that week. Well, I, I was off we wanted... for the week, so I had I had bandwidth. <laughs> bandwidth. I had bandwidth, and I think I was I was I hadn't had my baby yet, and I right. took some you know time off from work. Um, so we had we had the time, so we're like let's just knock it out of the park and record some episodes, just so we have it in our back pocket, so we can work on the content, so we can work on the clips, so we can work on other things. I think you're touching on a great point of like strike while the iron's hot. So if you have time to like knock out recording a couple episodes, do that. Or on the flip side, if you can, if you end up recording like two hours worth of of content, break it up. Like break it up into like four parts or two parts or three parts so that you can have like three different episodes just so that you can maximize that time that you spend. Totally. Yeah, that that's a great tip. I mean we would do that. Any other Yeah, we yeah, for sure we would do that. If it made sense. (laughs) Yeah. Any other tips or advice that we have learned over the over, you know, the you know, three or four months that we can share? Anything else that we can think of? Definitely. Definitely pay attention to your analytics, even though in the early days they may not tell you a lot. I think the biggest thing is understanding where our podcasts are playing on what different platforms and how to get that analytic information. So we rely on Spotify specifically for a lot of our analytics based on our our feed that goes to the, all the other platforms to give us kind of data around who's listening and you know their ages if we can get that information and gender and things of that sort so Mm -hmm. uh and then we supplement that with what's on our social media what's what posts are biting what posts aren't working you know what are being saved or shared because then that means it's a value to the audience and then how do we get those same people on social media who are consuming that for a different reason to come back and listen to our podcast so that's another thing that we're, we're trying to juggle that, you know, followers on social media are great and they're super important. But if they're if they aren't listening to your podcast, which is why you're doing what you're doing, then you also need to take that into consideration, too. So I think that that's in the space we're in right now of like, how do we turn those followers into like listeners? Um, yeah. Because we're not we're not trying to be content creators, but a byproduct of podcasting is that we have to be content creators. And graphic designers and social media managers and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. So for those who don't know, I think it's known uh, amongst everybody, but Canva. <laughs> Canva is the tool to use, guys, for yeah. logos and things of that sort. I think most people know about that. Yeah. You- we just have the free version and we are doing just fine. So if you want to pay for the um, professional version, go for it. But we just have the free version. <laughs> I mean, they are making it harder now because some of their designs and stuff, it's just like, why is everything pro? But I know we we figure out our ways around it. Um, Another thing that we do is we do use scheduling software. We're not posting every day. (laughs) We were at the beginning. We were at the beginning and realized that that was not uh, the best use of sustainable. Yeah. So we do. And going back to organization, uh, we do things in batches. We do a lot of batch processing when it comes to like recording podcasts uh, creating the content and then scheduling it and that way we can have a more strategic approach to how we're going about things and knowing what's coming down the pipeline and what content we want to create and then if that for some reason doesn't work we'll pivot but I think that I think that this is the best the best way to be able to get consistent podcast episodes out like we didn't know where we we're going to be at when we started and mm-hmm. now we're three months in right so like we have 13 or 14 podcasts I think at this point kind of out into the universe Mm -hmm. but we have more than that recorded yeah (laughs) tee hee hee (laughs) haha so yeah it's it's about having fun um and I think when you're podcasting with somebody like especially when you're bouncing off somebody if you work a corporate job you have a tendency to want to make it so profesh and say the perfect answer um (laughs) But a lot of people don't want to hear that in their downtime. So you've got to bring your authentic self into the podcast space and really show that and speak slowly and be mindful of how many times you say like. I remember listening yeah. to my original audio and I was, I was going to say like, <laughs> I, I was in that space being like, I have to make a change and, I, and I'm still working on that. But it's about having fun 
people want to hear people have good times give great tips enjoy what they're doing um so go in it with that mindset and take the highs with the lows and you know have your plan of like where 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 do you want to see some real movement and how long are you going to do this for before you decide to make a change yeah Uh, because podcasting is a long tail game uh another stat i don't have it here with me was like podcasts can take anywhere a year to like 18 months to see Mm -hmm. lift i believe that and it makes sense because by that point if you are doing weekly podcasts in a year you have like what 52 episodes so you're building up that inventory for new listeners to come and like binge and all of these episodes so it does take time to kind of build that space right and another thing that i didn't realize that we actually had like brainstorming sessions about multiple times was like what topics are we gonna talk about Mm -hmm. like what episodes are we gonna have so chris and i have jumped in a call just to talk about what topics are we gonna chat about and like we have a we have a word document with all the potential topics that we want to chat about we jump on a call when we and we knock out like the scheduling for like the month for all the social media we jump on a call for for different things not just recording a podcast for various yeah. various different things for content creation for brainstorming other ideas for something else like there's there's lots to chat through and talk about exactly so it's it's also planning out what those calls look like what's the objective of the call not like in the corporate world where you go in without any agenda and you just kind of waste 45 minutes (laughs) what did you do this weekend okay cool (laughs) yeah no we're (laughs) it's just getting straight down to like what needs to be done i mean court obviously a check-in but we do we do enjoy a good working session where we're just on the call for an hour and a half just plugging through doing our batch processing and scheduling and all that stuff, and just being like yeah talking through this yep i think we have a bit of a shorthand with each other because we've worked together for a long period of time so we're able to just be like hey this is this are you cool this yeah okay cool and then just moving 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 checking off boxes as we go yeah and and I feel like Chris and I both we communicate very well whether it's you know on a quick call or like through whatsapp like we're usually both pretty responsive um and if we don't like something we'll tell each other (laughs) (laughs) a lot of times it's me telling Sarah hey I just I just did this thing okay so just FYI and you're like yeah I saw that (laughs) Yeah, I saw that online at like, 2 a.m. Yeah. when I was feeding my baby. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I just changed the whole, I changed the whole setup while you were out. <laughs> um, What else has been beneficial for us? I also think, I yeah. think you found this, like the link tree. So linking all of our episodes and social media and you, like everything like that. I think that was super helpful to have that. I didn't know what link tree was before. So oh, that's really? cool. I, I saw it in people's like TikToks, like Link Tree, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll click on that. I'll go to their like Amazon storefront, da da da. But sure. to actually like understand it and like have one, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Y- yes. Um, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a bit of, I wouldn't say I'm a nerd, but I definitely do a lot of deep dives and rabbit holes into a lot of different things. So uh, it's something I known about before, but didn't use. I just was aware of it. But I would say for those that are hosting on a podcast platform that you need to redirect to your site. So you yeah. have to figure out how that works for you because your podcasting platform site or whatever you want to call it is doing the hosting and supposed to be doing some of like the sharing it with the rest of the world space. So, so yeah, you have to look at what works for you in terms of being able to display and get your call to action, your link in bio. What does that look like? We don't have a website. Yeah. So the link in bio works for us. Some people have a direct link to their Spotify to the most recent episode because Spotify is like most people use, which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, if you have a website, some people have it, a direct link to their website to go listen to episodes and that works too. So it's it's building out the systems that work and make sense based on how you are doing your podcast, I think is, mm-hmm. is, is what is the most important thing to figure out. And they're figuring out how <laughs> how to make all the dots connect and go back to where you need it to go back to. I think that was also something that we had to try and figure out. Facebook, and then what we put there, okay, it needs to it needs to redirect back to this and we need to get back to the same point and how do we make sure all of our listeners can listen because we do not use iPhones, so Apple Podcasts is not the top of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but they do have a stranglehold stranglehold on the podcast, so we have yeah. to 
you know, make sure that there's a way for people to listen that way too. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? Like I said, if you owe how if you if you're just you just you just want to try, just try it. Like I said, it's going. It's this industry is going to continue to grow as the years progress. So, give it a try. Um, do your research because it's a lot of work, a lot of prep, a lot of scheduling, a lot of organizing. But give it a try. But it's fun. It's fun though. Yes. Figuring it out and fun. learning it is fun. Um, with because the, there isn't any impending pressure that you're going to lose everything when you're doing this as like a hobby, right? And yeah. And you are the boss, so you don't have to worry about your boss not liking it with what you're trying to do. You have, you have the free range to just test and assess as you yeah. go through the whole process, which I think for me has been freeing versus working in a corporate environment where you have an idea, you have to build a pitch, you have to do all this. And they're like, well, I don't like it. And then you're like, oh, I'm the boss here. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to try it. It doesn't, it, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if I like it all the way or not. It's, I need to respond to the audience. I need to respond to the consumer. So yeah. that's, that's been a fun space. Um, what are some other things, Sarah, do you think that maybe you didn't know going in or what you've learned or what you've really started to like in doing podcasting that you didn't necessarily think you'd like or know that you'd like at the beginning? Um, I think I've really liked the content of our podcast, like either coming up with the idea, creating the content, creating our like little like clips of like the episodes or really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, I didn't really, I knew what YouTube shorts were, but I didn't really like really know that much. So like sure. really understanding YouTube shorts are like huge right now. So learning more about that. Um, so I think recently um, just learning about YouTube shorts and the, and like Instagram reels, but I, I, I kind of already knew about that. Mm. We just gotta, we just gotta go viral on TikTok, Krista. That's it. That, that's the one thing we need to, <laughs> we need to figure out. Well, hopefully we can. Um, TikTok is actually an underutilized space for podcasters. So it'll be interesting to see how that grows. But again, it also depends on what you're talking about and your and your niche. And it is hard because we are not a video podcast. So it's hard to, because sometimes at least I see video podcasters on, on TikTok doing like a funny clip or something. So we had to think outside the box to be like, okay, well, we want to, you know, share funny clips of our episode to get people interested and get people to actually listen to our episode. But how are we going to do that if we're not video? We're just audio. So we had to right. think about um, a different way to, to do that, um, which I think is working, hopefully. Hopefully people like it. Yeah, hopefully it's engaging. I mean, if anything, at least it's giving us some joy. But um, yeah, <laughs> using using some of our funny little sound bites to like create clips. But to Sarah's point, we're not in the clips. So how do we still make it engaging for both the eye and the ear so that people will watch? And exactly. Especially important on YouTube shorts. And uh, you're, you're touching on an important thing where it's like you you can read all the research that tells you where you're supposed to go and how you're supposed to do it and what's really popular. But then your experience might be so different. So for us, I didn't expect that we we're going to get a lot of traction on YouTube shorts, but we did for some of our clips. Right. Like and it was like, whoa, OK, this is this is something that we need to optimize for our audience because they they react to it and they react to it in like on mass. Right. Yeah. Um, as well as uh, where else was somewhere that was unexpected that we were like, oh, we got a lot of traction there. I think was it was it? one one of our TikTok videos. One of our TikToks, yeah, yeah, it was one morning. Um, I was sending Krista screenshots of our YouTube short because the number, like the views, kept rapidly increasing, and Krista thought I was faking it or making yeah. it up because <laughs> every few minutes the number w would change by like 600 views it was yeah. insane it was really funny because you did not believe me because <laughs> it's just like how and how like what yeah I definitely thought and like why question. like there's so many just so many questions well that's yeah and that's the part where it's like it's always a conundrum for us because we're like we're still figuring out what makes what makes something hot like what makes a clip yeah. a hot take that people are responding to and is it the time of day? Is it the day? It, it's hard to know because the clip had been posted. I did look at this last night in preparation for mm -hmm. this podcast. That particular clip was, had been late, posted. was late in the day. No, it was posted at 5 p.m. the night before. Mm -hmm. But didn't I remember start I think I posted it in the car because I forgot to post it that day. Yeah. <laughs> so 
it didn't it didn't do anything and then all of a sudden at like three or four in the morning it just started to like uptick Mm -hmm. exponentially in a way where it's like wow this thing is like really hit um and i think youtube can tell you the analytics so to give you a sense of where in the world this is u.s most of the audience on our youtube shorts is the u.s so it's not even like it's the other side of the world and it's a different time of day these are people in the u.s that all of a sudden at three or four in the morning were just like yep i want to view this short and just viewed it (laughs) valid also what's interesting about our audience so far is that on different mediums the audience is different so in youtube yes uh we get a we have males isn't it yeah, we have a big U.S. audience and they're males between the ages of like 25 to 34, like the 25 to something, 30 something category and whatever. There's two different categories, but they make up the chunk of it. But then yeah. our actual off social media platform of just like straight podcast platforms is, is predominantly female. So mm-hmm. we're also learning how to cater to the two audiences where some things really hit and some things really don't. Yeah. But just don't, yeah, I guess what we're saying is don't, don't be afraid to try and lean in. TikTok is not my space. That's really Sarah's space. I don't really mess around with the TikTok too much because I. <laughs> Did you just say the TikTok? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I try my best, but um, I want also want to say TikTok does not make it easy to, for, for creators to like schedule appropriately and post to TikTok. Like, can I just say that though? With, yeah, like, no, 100%. With the audio and the current audio and the hot audio being a thing, they, they there's no software that's free anyway that's been able for us to master being like, this is how we can post a TikTok in a way that's still current and playing the right audio behind it and shit like that. Yeah, at this time, at this day, like we like we schedule all of our other posts. Yeah, we haven't figured a way. If you know something or a software or a tool, let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be a lot of help. It's still, it's still a little bit of a test to schedule yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes time. It takes time. It takes time to think of the, like, caption, the hashtagging, the tagging, the everything. The, like, it, it takes time. All that takes time. Yeah. It just little, do it little by little. So whatever you yeah. can focus on first, focus on first. Uh, even if whatever you feel you're the best at, Instagram or otherwise, if you want to focus on that, then go ahead and do that too. And then just, but don't be afraid to go into the other spaces because you just don't know as you grow your audience. Uh, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. That's okay. Well, we wish you, if you are interested, we wish you the best of luck. Um, If you are starting it, let us know your podcast um, name. Let us know in the comments and we will follow you and we will encourage you yeah. and we'll be we'll be your hype woman in the background. Um, good luck. Let us know your progress. Let us know any tips or advice you have for us, please. Um, and all the best. Yeah. Don't forget to rate and review us because, again, we can't get better if we don't know better. So rate and review us on the platforms. Definitely follow us on our social media we are have we talked about podcast or have we talked about on all the social media um Mm -hmm. and let us know what you think what you think of us what you think we should talk about if you are a new podcaster what are some of your challenges we want to hear about that too um maybe you can come on the show and we could all talk about it together absolutely until next time krista all right bye girl see you bye